There are many designs to better manage stormwater on a property scale. This can be done both in new construction and in retrofits. Rainwater becomes runoff as soon as it hits an impervious surface, such as a roof or a driveway. By retaining, reusing, and infiltrating rainwater on their property, homeowners can reduce the amount of water that makes it to storm sewers. This mimics Mother Nature, where soil and vegetation slows the movement of water. It also allows it to infiltrate into the subsurface. Reducing the amount of roof runoff that enters storm drains means putting less strain on aquatic ecosystems, which bear the brunt of urban stormwater. This video will show you some examples of innovative stormwater management designs in residential, commercial, and industrial properties. We take you first to beautiful Bowen Island, just off the coast of Vancouver, BC. Bowen Island restricts water use during the dry summer months. The properties that are being developed in this area have a restrictive covenant, which requires everyone to have a rainwater harvesting system. And so that means that uh, all outdoor water use must come from your, uh, your storage tanks. But in our case, um, the tanks are both providing uh, outdoor water use and our toilet water. Kim Stevens is a resident of Bowen Island. Stevens harvests his roof water into two large tanks, each with a volume of 2,000 gallons, or over 8,000 liters. These tanks collect rainwater from a 2,400 square foot roof. A millimeter of rain falling onto the um, roof catchment area translates into about one inch of water level in the, in the two tanks. Gutter guards and downspout filters prevent leaves and other debris from entering the system. Water then flows through a pipe into the tanks. Stevens tanks are connected to the indoor plumbing for the toilet water supply. This is the pump, then you know, it sucks the water out of the tanks outside and then feeds it into the system to, to uh, supply water to the, uh, to the toilets. And it's, it's, it's a very, there goes the pump. Older toilets use 21 liters per flush. Stevens has installed low flow toilets where just three to six liters of water are used per flush. Stevens keeps track of the household water use by checking the level in the tanks. This tank is, uh, is 92 inches in, in height. So all I, all I do now is do a simple measurement from the underside of the, uh, the lid and I'll just see how much has gone down. So we're at about 44 inches, so it's about halfway. After whatever it is, uh, six weeks of uh, rain-free weather, this tank is now down about uh, half capacity, and that includes our, ex our outdoor water use as well as all of our toilet use. The water collected in the tanks is clear and ready to use right away. One person in a year uses one tank of water. So it uh, puts it all in, in context in terms of uh, I know, how, we, how we size systems and what we actually use. Those two tanks are more than sufficient to get us through you know, a four to six month period, uh, both indoor use and our limited outdoor use without having to switch over to the, uh, the treated water supply. The house contains other stormwater features. Gutter chains direct some of the roof water into the garden. If you look at the driveway, you'll see that it's uh, granular because that's another part of the restrictive covenant is no paved driveways so that whatever falls on it percolates down. And in terms of the garden itself, uh, it's a very limited garden area, but we either just use the combination of the soaker hose and uh, hand watering. As we saw on Bowen Island, driveways are a great opportunity for homeowners to reduce impervious surfaces on their property. Conventionally, driveways are paved using concrete or asphalt. All rainfall that lands on them becomes runoff. Using an alternative driveway design can allow water and contaminants to infiltrate into the soil. This can be done using pavers and grass, a ribbon driveway, or pervious pavement that directly absorbs water. 
These options are effective ways to reduce the stormwater runoff generated. These designs are not only found on houses. Even your local community center can incorporate stormwater management into its landscaping. The South Surrey Community Center has a specially designed roof that directs roof water down a spout into a rain garden. Rain gardens create seepage areas where water can infiltrate into a grouping of plants called an artificial bioswale. Concrete pavers on the parking lot allow some water to infiltrate into the soil below. The soil then treats the oil and grease left behind from cars. The parking lot is also graded to coax water to flow into the rain garden. North Vancouver receives over two meters of rain and snow every year. Managing and reducing runoff is a big challenge. Leading the way is the Mountain Equipment Co-op Retail Store. This building represents a combination of structures and designs that collects water from the roof, parking lot, and adjacent road. It also detains and filters the contaminated runoff for indoor use. Downspouts from the roof direct rainwater into a rain garden. This is functional and aesthetically pleasing. Crystal Campbell is one of the stormwater consultants who helped design these features. The stormwater management on this site is innovative and unique. Um, here behind me is a, a stormwater rain garden. So it collects water from the roof and from part of the parking area and it uh, treats it by moving the water through the swale, through the vegetation and the soil layer. It gets um, filtration and then it is infiltrated into the ground. We have a groundwater well that takes water from the ground and reuses it in the toilets. Signs in the store's bathrooms inform the public about the source of the toilet water and warn that it's not safe to drink. Most of the contaminants are coming from the parking lot area and so that can have general um, stormwater contaminants such as um, sediment, total suspended solids, it can have oils and grease from uh, vehicle droppings, um, and it can also have metals. So uh, as they're drained to the rain gardens, they get stormwater treatment through the vegetation and soil layer. Just down the street, Richard Bowes has taken a proactive and hands-on approach to retrofitting his family home. What we're going to look at here is um, some of the things that I've managed to do to our home here on what we call a retrofit basis on a single family property. One of the things we're doing now, green infrastructure, cascading systems, just like what Mother Nature does, starting with the trees, the tree canopy, the branches, the, the bark, the soil, the soil under the soil and then ground. So I've kind of tried to mimic the same thing here. All the water that lands on the parking lot is collected into the sump there and then there's a pipe that's collected from the sump that runs down in behind the base of this wall. So I'm infiltrating all of the water uh, from the parking lot out into the soil behind the wall. The system then comes down the side, down here, to my first collection sump. All the water from the roof of my garage, the water that doesn't infiltrate in behind the wall comes into this sump where you can see the gravel bottom. So there's a lot of infiltration that's going on just on the water that hits this sump here. So during heavy rains, if this sump fills up and the ground and the water is saturated, the water comes out from a pipe that flows down here and flows into my main backyard infiltration system. So this system here has allowed me to build the garage and all the parking lot with no connection out to the storm sewer system. So after working with the city, I got all of the approvals that I needed uh, you know, to put that alternative system in place. Bose also has a rain barrel connected to his house. 
The important thing here is we've had some rain. So I've got a little pipe here and not quite full, but one of the things too, it's important that when your rain barrel fills up, you need to empty it to use the water, right? Because you don't want, once your rain barrel is full, it doesn't do anything for you. So I've got the kids all programmed to check the rain barrel, come put the hose out on the grass and just empty the rain barrel out on the grass. The, uh, the water guns are out on the yard, so it's been hot lately. So they'll use the, the rain barrel to fill up the water guns and things like that. Bose has detached the downspout from his stormwater connection to allow roof water to drain onto the grass. It may seem that a grass lawn is a good option to allow infiltration on a property, but that's not true when turf is rolled over compacted soil. This is common when construction uses heavy machinery. The soil is so hard, it is as though grass has been laid over concrete. Unsurprisingly, this leads to drainage problems, pooling, and runoff during heavy rains. Adding a layer of topsoil can alleviate this problem. One of the new standards we're working on is when they do landscaping here, we're really trying to encourage developers to use at least 300 millimeters of, of organic topsoil because that's been found to be the most effective depth for soil to manage rainwater. So I've just dug a bit of a hole here and they're, got, they, they're using well above the 300 millimeter standard of topsoil in here, so that's great. In addition to thick topsoil, you can plant trees. Urban trees are very important for stormwater management. Rain is intercepted by the leaves in the tree's canopy. This reduces and slows rainfall that would otherwise become runoff. Water also evaporates from the canopy back to the atmosphere. Research has shown that western red cedar trees intercept and evapotranspire up to 55% of rainfall. Even without other stormwater designs, a large tree can slash your effective impervious area. Urban trees also provide shade, temperature regulation, windbreak, erosion control, wildlife habitat, and they act as a carbon sink. Finally, one of the most visible and beautiful designs for urban stormwater management can be found in the heart of downtown Vancouver, the new convention center Green Roof. Green roofs consist of a synthetic growing medium where vegetation is planted. Depending on the local climate, some green roofs are irrigated, but typically they don't need to be watered. The vegetation takes up much of the rainwater that falls on the roof, keeping it from flowing down into the stormwater system. The vegetation will filter any water that does seep out, so runoff will be of better quality, containing fewer sediments and associated metals. Green roofs are engineered to have many additional benefits in green building design, such as temperature regulation in the summer and winter. They also provide green space in dense urban areas. Innovative stormwater management designs come in all shapes and sizes. It can be as simple as planting a tree, or as complex as an engineered rain garden or green roof. Using just one of these options on a property can have a significant reduction in stormwater runoff. All designs need to be properly maintained and further research needs to be conducted on the longevity of these designs and their effectiveness at improving quality of runoff. In our next video, we are moving on up. See how stormwater is managed at the neighborhood scale when we have roads and traffic to contend with.